ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋ ਕੋਈ ਗੱਲ
inviting those who are and can be on the synagogue just to make themselves inside those who are hearing. Thank you very much. Good morning, good morning, good morning everyone, good morning. We are about to begin the program. We have said those of you who can be assembled on the inside do so. Remember the protocol of social distancing. Remember your marks. And just remember that as it takes to put our body to rest, we will do. 
through so the way that most pertinent man in which it should be done. Let me give a special welcome to each and every one to the Christian Assembly of the Church. Our church doors are always open. It is open for you to be fellowship in life, not just in death, but in life. We extend to you a warm welcome. I know Charlie, you can come to the church and visit. And uh, I hope he had given his life to the Lord. But his friend is in our Lord, he will do so. You and I will know who is his friend. I was asked to be a Confirm in Jesus, those of you who have decided to follow Jesus, it is end time. And if you don't believe, look around, look and see what does that mean. You can't keep a great sister and brother, you may not even have seen, not seen God who not mind because of the virus. Then I'm told that there is a lot of people in China, which is more dangerous than the problem. Huh? Next is Christian now. But I implore you that you come for the redemption and glory of man. Amen. On behalf of the pastors, the elders, and the board members and members of the Christian Sunday Adventist Church, uh, we'll just like to say our condolences to the family and that you keep firm. First Corinthians 10 13 says there is no temptation. Such as which is common to man that God is not able with the temptation, make a way of escape. So, child, we have escape, my dear. What is yours? To surrender to Jesus, right? Eh? That's your life. This judgment starts. Yours is still going on. So, you need to surrender to him. Amen. Um, no, 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 when the preacher comes, when the preacher comes, he's on his way here. Okay, I'm just notifying you that the preacher is on his way, pastor is on his way, and we who are here will just pull things together and he will come. Make yourself at home. Make yourself comfortable with us as we come. She will just do the opening remarks and then to the platform. All right. So we don't want to pull you back. We want to go for word with the program. Amen. Amen. Oh,
Your attention, please. At this moment, I will just ask the congregation to stand. He that dwell into the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, it is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him that I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snares of the flowers and from the noise pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feather, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and a butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night or for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth a new day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any place come nigh thee. Thy dwelling, sorry. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. We are here this morning, the Thanksgiving service of our dear beloved brother. Philip Augustus Samuel, aka Charlie Rusty. No matter what the song says, the storm shall be last. He is gone, but we who are alive has a chance to make it right. Born, born, born again, thank God I'm born again. That's our hope in him. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We thank you that you are God. You dwell in the affairs of men. We are so God that as we are here to lay to raise our beloved brother, brother Philip, Augustus, Samuel, Charlie, 
we will seek to the fact that we do it in reverence to your name. Not to him because he knows nothing, but to those who are alive, we ask of oh God that you will pick their hearts to think and to hack upon your words. We ask of oh God that you will delight in their ways and that they will change each and every one of us to newness of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And by the congregation, so please be seated. Just some housekeeping protocols to be announced. The restrooms are located to the back. There are two restrooms there. They're not gender labeled, so you use the one that you're most comfortable with. We ask that you, as you're sharing this and Thanksgiving stories, that if you have your cell phone on, you will put it on vibrate or silence so we don't have interruptions during the Thanksgiving service. We are all aware of the COVID protocols to be observed. We will be observing social distances so the chairs are spaced. We ask that you wear your mask and I see that you're all there in your mask or commendations. And we ask that you remember to reverence the sanctuary. The pastor, elders, and the members of the Faith and Study Adventist Church express their heartfelt condolences to the families, friends, and well wishes of Mr. Philip Augustus. Summers, we want to remind you that the word of God is if you should seek counseling or comfort, even after you have made your loved ones to rest, our pastors and elders will avail themselves to you all. You will be listening to the program when you have entered the sanctuary. The program will go unannounced. If there are any changes, you will hear from the topic. We now move right into the first lesson, which will be done by a Russian Miller. The thought of the deceased, then you will get a selection from the Christian Seventh day Adventist Church. Now, this will be asked that you use the lecture that is located to the front. If you don't have a Bible, this will you can indicate that the church can provide same. Thank you. <laughs> To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to laugh. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather the stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to be. A time to be and a time to pass away. A time to rent and a time to store. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to fail. A time to war. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. Let me just say the time marks again to say welcome to the Prince of Devon District. We are the Pierce brothers, same mother, same father, same sister, same brothers, biological straight across the board. And um, at church here, as soon as we are through singing, we have an appointment in St. Mary. Collaboration sent Mary to go to another funeral. So, as soon as we are facing an air, we will just ask to be excused and we'll be on our way to St. Mary. Right, Ellen? Just don't look like that. Ellen. I'm 
I remember I didn't know what to be born again. And I said, oh, some people want to come over with like some fleshy. Charlie said, come on. I teach how to be properly. For the young guys of the community, Charlie helped them with their family. From poetry to agriculture. That's what Charlie was. A fun lover with kids. I remember when he said he was going to give up smoking. It was a joke to see Charlie with the children. Like as he had a cigarette in his hand, the children would say, come Charlie, take it out, take it out. And no matter how big he was, he obeyed. He obeyed them. So they had a kind of bond. And he loves to spoil it. Wherever he goes to work, he will always put aside some money. And if you see him as soon as he gets 20 of them, he's pretty tough and he's contributing and saying, You want juice, you want this, you want this, you want that. But Charlie, to me, is a very humble man. Very, very humble man. When he was sick, and I said to him that, Tell him, you, you must come spend some time. He said, I said, I don't want to be a problem to anybody. I want to stay here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if I can take some time to bring us up where I can clean. I think you also the greatest to, to get it clean. To clean it. Because I said, more I help myself to suffer. I just want to know that I'm able to do something to help myself more than lying here. And as more time as the child is stuck with me, that now that we are home only and we have the healthiest child growth system. And yet, for anybody who know Charlie, you know that Charlie was just very light. No matter how good a friend you are to Charlie, there's a time when Charlie gets so mad. So mad, you would believe that you are Charlie afraid. You speak somewhere that was going to the child over, man, over. And then by tomorrow, it's good again. This same church, the Sabbath church, invited a lot of youngsters to the community elder. And no matter how Charlie had the Roman cigarette, he would even buy a shop and come over here when it's one o'clock. And he would stay each Sabbath from one to four. I know um, some of the church members can attest to it that they try to encourage him to baptize. And in the last, he said he would have done that. But time again, take control of man. So for all of us who are here, we just want to say you got to live for each other. If you're meant to live and you're living for yourself, it makes no use. It made no sense because Charlie doing is what contributed to him when he was ill. He gives, and when he was ill, people give freely. Nobody humbled. Everybody took their turn in the community to help assist Charlie. And we just want to encourage young persons, even adults, to do what best they can and to always give back to somebody. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's not to be well covered on this section of the program where we'll be taking open tributes. We can take about two to three tributes. Some of us would have been a dear friend to Charlie, and this is your opportunity to give your tribute as it relates to Charlie. As you prepare to come, I have been visiting this community for, I think, I'm not going to be here, so 15. I remember coming here in late 2002, we to 2003, and from then, this place has been my place of worship. And Charlie is one of the persons I stumbled in while I was here. I remember when he was friendly with Colleen, who eventually became a member of the church and as Charlie the common Charlie would come. Charlie as Natalie made reference to Charlie told us that he would have made the ultimate decision in giving his life to Christ, but unfortunately that did not materialize and every time is a fickle thing. And life is unpredictable. So tomorrow's promise to no one. In a Jamaica and say, you don't know when you're happy. So say that to say that the word of God reminds us that today is a day of salvation. If you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. Don't make time run out of it. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Don't make time run out by you. Because when you would have died here on earth, that would have been the amen and the hallelujah. It is finished. At that time, the Bible tell you that when somebody dies, even their memory and their thought 
perish, but reminded to live a while it is still there because the night come when no man shall work. Amen. We're still taking the children, Mr. Charlie. Anybody going once? Going twice? Please come back, children. Any family member, any friend, any neighbor? Charlie used to walk up and down my eyes used to see him and he used to mingle with one of our lunchtime the brother would see him come over to church and then share and know nearly all to most of all of them was right now that yeah man Charlie used to rub shoulder with me and the virgin then not that and I know he would have socialized with some of you as family members and friends All right, until somebody decides to come, we're going to move on with the program. We know what the remembrance, which will be done by a cousin of Charlie, is Richard, in, or Richard is in the house. Richard, I'm going to turn over to you. Good afternoon. Remembering of the child. I want to first of all extend my gratitude to the relatives, friends, and attendees who are today in honor of this great man, Philip Augustus Samuel, a person we have all come to love and cherish for many years. All of us have known him in a variety of roles father, life partner, brother. Uncle, cousin, grandpa, chef, Arbucha, and great friend. I have been privileged to know him as my cousin, but growing up as a child, we used to call him Uncle Charlie. To everyone, you, to everyone, whether you were family or not, he had such a friendly, warm, positive personality. It is within this context. I shall speak about his life and the way he personally impacted those he came in contact with. But before I embark on this journey, I want to ask you a question. When you hear the name Uncle Charlie, what words immediately come to mind? If you're like me, there is no single word to choose from. Let me share a few adjectives that come to mind. Hearing, strong, Humorous, encourager, thankful, real, a storyteller, a peacemaker, and at last, a dreamer. <laughs> yes, we are know the Charlie, the late working brother. Felix Augustus Charles, our uncle Charlie, was born on the 4th of March, 1950, in a small rural community of Ganawa Bay, St. Catherine, but spent his child years in Berk District, Bagua. Like many elders will tell you, growing up with, in the country at the time was tough, but joyful at the same time. You had, you had to wake up early to get the chores done, which involved carrying water and tying out animals. But to him, this was fun. You could, you could get, to, you would get to meet up with your friends early in the morning and getting in and get into mystery you usually follow fruits were plentiful and sweet the fire was kept warm with the rose in a sweet potato and yam. my father related a story to me about when they were a young boy and the adventures they used to have he recalled one day charlie was asked to take food to his grandfather who was working in the farm Halfway on the journey, he started to complain about feeling tired and hungry. He decided to take a small portion of it, but before long, Charlie ate the entire thing. <laughs> to make matters worse, Charlie threw away the plate because he wanted to leave no evidence behind. When his grandfather found out what he did, he was furious and decided to give him a fine beating. But could he get over that Charlie? It was a great cat and mouse game between them. If the grandfather was walking on the left, 
Then Charlie will be walking on the right. And this went on for three days with Charlie sleeping outside and a grave to avoid the people. But sure enough, Grandpa will catch up on him. And as you say, the rest is history. In later years, we moved to the community of Kingston and Kingston. We got employed at the Brown and Latina factory. I worked for many years. We took one working at the sugar factory. We started to work for me. And we made it, you know, late filing. I was very proud of the little family. He worked hard to support them and help different jobs along the way. He would visit his sisters and brothers in Spanish town, always riding his trusty bicycle. He never, he never came empty handed, always bringing some sort of gift, no matter how small. On one occasion, he brought a new water boot for his sister Gloria. On his next visit, she told him that the water boot got worn out and had no more heat. He was surprised. Given a short amount of time between the last visit and joking, he said, But sis, I never give you this water boot to live in us. <laughs> he had a great sense of humor. Did I mention he was a storyteller? Whenever he was around, you could always tell he had a good story about his life. Like the time he was working in Walmart in St. Catherine, operating a tractor on top of a mound of dirt. As he tried to position the tractor, he lost control and it overturned the plane. But luckily, the tractor made an additional roll and ended upright back on its wheel. Not even a scratch in his teeth. You would sit there in harm, listening to him. He was, this man was indestructible. Whenever we were at work, were, were, Whenever there was a family function, he would be there, giving, giving a helping hand in the kitchen or butchering animals. His sister would say, Charlie, make sure you're not wrong here drinking any rum enough. Who will lose this man? Not like that. While hiding his drink around the corner. If this wasn't general, he would be around, helping out in whatever way he could. He was a hard worker and a family man. Uncle Charlie departed this life on the 18th of June at the Spanish Town Hospital after a brief illness, leaving behind sisters Lorna, Anne Marie, Meloni, Gloria, and Gloria, brothers Fitzroy and Sylvester, his daughter Ursula, and two grandsons. I close with this. You can tell the greatness of a man's life, not so much by the material wealth or large estate. On the contrary, the greatness of a man is the legacy he leaves behind and the lives he has impacted along the way. My cousin may have never been a rich man with money, yet for those who knew him, he was rich in kindness, rich in his Rich with a helping hand whenever they need it, oh, and always a sense of family. Rest in peace, on the child. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Well done. Well, now the second of this service, so we all can pull hard today. Participate. I hope you love coming your wallets and your purse for those who are thinking of leaving a check in the offering place with a job or check to the children. Good job. Seven day Adventist church. You're going to ask for Nicholas the kind of standing place. There is a hymn in the program. Is anybody familiar with this hymn? If I walk in the path of beauty, did somebody say yes? Praise the Lord. I see that right here. Can you say? Hallelujah. Bless his name. Because I don't know him. And I don't know him like I know him. So I invite you to the lecture to assist us in singing this song as our usher stand in place and our sisters come to the lecture. And I'm waiting on the sisters to appear so I can 
Shall we bless the name of the Lord? Shall we call him by his name? What's his name, church? Indeed, that his name is Jesus, is our King of Kings. He is our Lord of Lords. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He's our Rose of Sharon. He's our Lily of the Valley. He's the brightest loving star. And he's coming back to redeem us from this old wicked world. Well, thank you for teaching me a new song. I really appreciate it. You were able to get me into song again. You know, as I first went to the song, you know. But I want to thank you so much for assisting. You know, we're strengthening our voice. Together we can. Indeed, and I thank you so much. We're going to now move into the reading of the eulogy, which will be done by Mrs. Dexter. <laughs> Thank you. 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 He attended Polo Primary and Olive School, where he obtained his first education. Berry District was where he spent his early days, where he farmed and assisted his grandfather and grandmother. He knew about rearing animals and oh, he did one. very well. However, as time progressed and he grew older, he left Berry and went to live at Fifth and Fourth North this community. This is where he developed his skills and prowess as a tractor driver. From Bona Lodge, Fort Worth, to several parishes across Jamaica, he drove and operated tractors. He was a true hustler. Even assisted his mom back, back in the days to sell photo frames. Oftentimes, Charlie would sell the frames and went straight to the bar to get white. He was a man of the spirit, well, reality You could smell the rum from a distance. Even the good old Jamaican Kulu Kulu rum was no exception. You may be used to romance, haggling, and cursing some real Jamaican expletive. Well, not Uncle Charlie. He was different. He would just laugh if you should ask, or even deny the fact that he was even drinking. No man, not drinking at all. For those who knew Uncle Charlie as Philip, might not know him as a hot stepper in the Jamaican slang as Yalis, but in his days, he had many ladies. However, he was blessed with one beautiful daughter, that's Rochelle. Surprisingly, his own child for his characteristic, we could say. Uncle Charlie was a man of principle. You could not step in place and think him as Kinti to you. He always ensured, for one, his pots were well scored and the kitchen well cleaned. He was a helpful person. He found it difficult to say no, irrespective of how busy he was. He would wake early in the morning and start tidying the house and do any cleaning, which men presently would say, a woman could do that. No, that was not a child. He would do as much as he could and he was there. In his very last days, though, he started attending this church. He, I would say, realized that the artificial room would not suffice. He didn't make it to the baptism as we heard earlier. However, he was getting there. So I guess for us today, we can take notes. We have to do it now. Tomorrow is not coming. I saw him approximately one month before he died. And even though his body was in pain, I asked him, how are you doing? And he replied, he surely will be remembered as a quiet but disciplined, calm but no nonsense, 
But most importantly, he be remembered as a man that loved his family. He made his transition to rest on Thursday, June 18, 2020, leaving his daughter Rochelle, two grandchildren, sister Lorna and Marie, Melanie, Gloria, and Florence, brothers Fitzroy and Sylvester, aunties, uncles, nieces, nephews, and relatives, along with friends. But we just want to say for now, rest in peace, Uncle Charlie. You're gone, but surely not forgotten. Thank you. Is it that strong? Did I pronounce it? First, I see this name too. Yes, we're having a lot of first today. Praise the Lord. We're going to have this segment of the Thanksgiving service where we are about to hear from the Word of God. Pastor Edward Rowe was with us yesterday and he asked me to send his apology to those attending the Thanksgiving service because he had another funeral in, was it Greta Popa or Hesha Elder? Greta Popa. He had another funeral to attend, so he is unregrettably absent. He is unfortunately absent because he had another Thanksgiving service. To bring the word to us this afternoon is with me our first elder. Just to give you a brief introduction of him. He's not a native of Jamaica land, we know, but he's Jamaican by nationalization. I hope I said that correctly. He has come to Jamaica with the hope of leaving, but that didn't work as planned. He is still here with us. He's Nigerian by birth and culture. He serves here as the first elder of the Christian Seventh Adventist Church. He loves the Lord. He's married. He has a son with his wife. I present to you none other than Elder Emma Rosel Akide Moore. Do I need to say that again? We are the virgin of a clock and the elder of our years. So I'm going to say that because I have to be practicing that name before I go to the So I know it. I want to say it. I present to you, Church Elder Emma Rosel Akide Moore. He will be bringing the word of God. To you, I pray that as he stands in the gap between God and the people, he will give the wind a mighty voice. He will declare that the Lord saved the healed and he satisfied. But before all the Akiba Lord comes to us with the word of God, we'll be singing together. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Then after we would have seen that in you in the song, and the Akiba Lord will come to us with the word of God. We'll be going together after two, one, two. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you are happy to be here this morning? Despite all that has happened. If you are happy, I want you to just raise your hands. Praise the Lord. I just want to remind you 
that God is a God of the living and not a God of the dead. So how many of you can sing Jamaican songs here? You can sing real Jamaican gospel songs. I want you to raise your hand. We are going to be doing something this morning because uh, Charlie, as I know him, is not a daddy, daddy person, as Jamaicans will say, right? One of the most vital countries in the world, right, is Jamaica. Do you believe that? Yes. So I want somebody, I want a volunteer this morning who can sing a real Jamaican gospel song. And we are going to be singing that gospel song. And we are going to rejoice at the Thanksgiving service of our brother, our friend, our father, our uncle, Charlie. Is there any volunteer in the house this morning? Jamaica is a Christian country, right? And so we should have a lot of Christians here who, it doesn't matter if you go to church on Sunday or you go on Wednesday or you go on Thursday or you go on Friday. But I just want a volunteer this morning. Praise the Lord. I am going home on the morning train. I am going home.
Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Let us pray. You bow your heads as we pray and close your eyes. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for bringing us together here at the funeral service of our brother Charlie. Lord, we thank you for the life that you gave to him. And even in death, we will praise your name. Lord, we have come out, oh Lord, to remember him. But Lord, today, we are not concerned about ourselves because the times are difficult, the times are hard. These are not normal times. Lord, we are asking for your protection. We are asking for your deliverance. We are asking for your salvation upon our lives, upon our children, upon our communities. Lord, even as we go to bury our brother today, Lord, we are asking for joining mercies. Nothing will go wrong. Father, even the family that he has left behind, we are asking for your manifold blessings, for your comfort, for your assurance upon his family. Lord, we cannot thank you enough for your protection upon our lives. Lord, we just say glory, honor, and adoration be ascribed unto you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You can do better. Say amen. 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 So this morning, I just want to comfort the family of our brother Charlie. Charlie was a personal friend of mine. And also, he was a brother of mine. Uh, I just want us to understand that one thing that money cannot buy is life. Now, one thing that has defined technological advancement is death. I have not seen any country that has been able to get or create a vaccine for death. If you have any, you can raise your hand here this morning. Even the great United States of America cannot a solution to death. Now, now when we go, go to the, the cemetery, I have, I have been told you this by because of what I do to go to every cemetery in Jamaica. Every one of them. And one, one thing, thing that, that I discover is that when you go to the cemetery, everywhere is silent. You don't, don't hear a single word. And I was able to talk to you to ask questions to each of you, personally, person that I met in the cemetery. I went to Pi Cemetery in Mount Bay. I went in there and I met some men there and I asked them a question. I said, What is the most unique thing about this cemetery? He said, Since I've been here, we never see nobody come trouble me. Nobody come here to trouble me. And then I moved to Redland Cemetery in Kingston. I met somebody in there. He said, I've been living here for the past 10 years. And I've never seen anybody come here to trouble me. Now, I moved from there. I went to Calvary. I went to Dark Cross. I went to Mayrex. The same thing I was told. The living are the ones that are able to move from one place to another. And that is why it is very important that when we are alive, when we have life in us, just like we are seated this morning, we ought to praise the Lord. We ought to praise the Lord. Just as I'm speaking to you right now, about 3,000 people just died in the United States. 3,000 people. Now, one of the most astounding things that I want to remind you of is that when you are alive, you worry about your children. 
You worry about what I'm going to eat today. What is, how am I going to pay my children's school fees? But once you drop down, you do not remember those children. So, Bridget, going to the Bible, I'm going to be speaking to us this morning from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Matthew, I'm not going to spend time preaching here. I believe that every one of you seated down here today has been to our church service. We do not preach the Seventh day Adventist church. We don't preach Adventism. We preach Jesus. Are you listening to me, brethren? We do not preach Seventh day Adventists. I'm not trying to convert you or baptize you to become a Seventh day Adventist. But I want to baptize you into Jesus. So in John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, I'm going to read. He said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Verse 2 says, In my father's house are many rooms. Now, another interpretation will say, In my father's house, there are many mansions. Now, let's go further. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, if you come to a funeral, what do you say in a funeral? What do you uh, say to the loved ones in a funeral? Now, I just want to take you to where I come from. Africans are very dramatic when it comes to funerals. If we were in Africa right now, we won't be sitting down quietly like this. This coffee will be going in the air and coming down. Because they believe that there are two things you celebrate in life. The day you are born and the day that you die. So people will dance and dance and dance and they will even hire people to come and cry for charity. So sometimes when a person is crying, you say, uh, who are you crying? You say, my sister, I'm oh, sorry, it's my brother who does that. Apparently, he doesn't even know the person that he is crying for. Now, this has been coming up for centuries, for decades, you know, from wherever. Like Jamaican have to say, what do you right? But I want to tell you something. Jesus was concerned that his disciples, now he was about to break our news to them, breaking news. I know so many of us have heard about breaking news or we watch breaking news on the television, TVJ. When they say breaking news, you are curious, you want to know what has just happened, right? I say they killed seven men in whatever, then killed five men, or oh, one man, no one, because we are starting for bad news. People want to hear bad news because it sells. Now, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you know, it's time that I'm going to depart from you. I am going to go away. I am, and I'm going to be killed. And then I'm going to resurrect again. But I want you to have a vision. I want you to have a goal. I want you to have some sets some objectives, some things that you look forward to. That is, there's going to be a mansion that I'm going to prepare for you. If it were not so, I will not tell you because Jesus cannot lie because he's the son of God. Right? And then he told them, he said, you know what? I am going to come again. And I'm going to take you to myself so that where I am, there you will be also. But let me remind you, brother, that message is not for Timbal 2. It's not for everybody. It is for those who dedicate themselves. Now, let me tell you something. Jesus did not die for the Christians. Jesus died for humanity. Are you listening to me, brother? Don't make the mistake. Jesus did not die for the Christians. Jesus died for everyone. So this message that I am talking about this morning, I am going to prepare a place for you, is for those who will dedicate themselves in love and in service. 
Let me remind you something. The message of God is not Christianity. The message of God is love. Because God himself is love. So, how do you deal with your neighbors when you are alive? Now, here, 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 here we are the breaking news. Jesus said, These two commandments I leave with you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you claim to be an Adventist, if you claim to be a Christian, you will not treat your neighbor bad. Now, let me tell you another breaking news. One of the problems we have in Jamaica today is that we do not love each other. We have thrown love out of the window. We have thrown humanity out of the window. A man can just take up a knife and slice another man and he goes to a next bar and he starts to drink. Why? Because the hearts of men have become desperately wicked. But I want to tell you something, we are not deterred. Because you know what? You know what? Jesus said, when I read the works of Jesus, when I, when I read the scriptures, I'm a Bible student. I have dedicated my life for the Lord. Because it is the only thing in life that makes sense. Nothing else makes sense. I want to tell you something. Even as worse as Jamaica is, I've not really seen black people in Jamaica. I'm telling you, I've not seen bad people. You need to take a trip to places like Somalia, to places like Eritrea, to even places like Libya, to places like Syria, and see what man is doing to another man. Now today we are faced with a global pandemic. What is a global pandemic? It means that every one of us in the world, we are not turning our nose. And our mouths because we don't want to catch the virus. Now, what has caused all these things? Sin that came into the world from the beginning. And the Bible says it is going to get worse. It is going to get worse if you are waiting for it to be business as usual. It is never going to be so. But what is God's message to humanity today? Love has totally disappeared from our midst. In case you don't know, you are the reason why the coronavirus is happening in the world. You that is sitting down here. Because we have made a mess. Now, sometimes, I want to tell you, um, I was pastor, I was privy to, uh, to something that happened in Africa one day. Two brothers. Now, these two brothers, they are not just born of the same father, the same mother. They are actually twins. You know, they left their home and they said, oh, they were going to Europe to make money. And actually, when they got to Europe, they made a lot of money. And it was time for them to come back to their homeland. Do you know the day that they, they arrived in Lagos, the younger brother because they made a lot of money, they had a lot of money. Now, both of them, they are twins. One would expect that they will love each other as themselves. That very night when they arrived in Lagos, they were staying in the hotel to move from Lagos to a place called Benin. Guess what happened? The younger brother slipped poison into his elder brother's dream. And lo and behold, the elder blood brother, because they are, we call them Peter and Paul, twins. That's the names we give to twins, Peter and Paul. So the Peter was a senior and the Paul was the junior. But they had money, which was their goal. And the junior poisoned the senior, and then the senior died. Have you ever seen things so, so wicked? Today, I was just reading in the news that a brother paid for persons to kill the sister in this country. 
the heart of man has become desperately wicked. Now we are sitting down here, we are crying for Charlie. We can't cry for him. We can only cry for ourselves because things are going to get worse if we do not change our ways. Now, sometimes you have a neighbor. You just see the neighbor, you just wear new shoes. You say, what does she have feel like? Nature just takes over you. You see somebody on the wayside, hungry, can't get your food to eat. You bring out your smartphone and you start to feed. See, you have the man poor and you feed the man. Somebody is dying and bleeding. You bring out your mouth, your, your, instead of helping, you bring out your smartphone. You know, you say, this is going to trend on TikTok. This is going to trend on Instagram. This is going to trend on Facebook. You just want the likes, but you will save that person. Brethren, I want to remind us that Jesus has told us that he's going to prepare a place. And he's definitely going to come back. And right now, we find comfort in the ways of Jesus. And that's why, whether Corona or no Corona, we are not deterred because we know where we are going. We know where we are going. But are you sure today of where you are going? Are you sure today of who is your master? Now, I want to remind us again, we cannot serve two masters at a time. You can't serve two masters. Um, I, I belong, in Africa, I belong to a palace. A palace is where a king lives, right? You can't serve the king and you are serving his chiefs. You either pay your allegiance to the king and the king alone. And that is how we are today. Are you on the path of Jesus? A time came in the life of Joshua. He said, choose you this day, whom you will serve. In fact, the, the, the God who lives in heaven knows every one of you right here. The God who lives in heaven knows every one of you right here. Now, Jesus had a habit of saying things at a funeral. If anyone else would say, then it would be awkward and wrong. If I come to the Charlie's sister today and I say, you know, I know how you feel. I'm lying. I don't know how she feels. We love to say those nice things when somebody dies. Oh, you know, I know what you are going through. You don't know what she's going through. But Jesus was the only one. Or he is the only one who knows what we are going through. And that is why we need to examine our ways. I'm not going to take your time. You need to understand that death is real. This, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You see, all of us here, if Christ tarries, we are all going to die. You know, um, I love, uh, Pastor, I love some of my, my elders in Africa. I know what they do when they are alive. They build their grave in front of their house. When he wakes up every morning, he looks at that grave. Because it reminds you that this place is not for you. You, you see, young men, you know, um, one thing I've seen in Jamaica today is that our young men love to behave as if they buy. And my recommendation is we have a lot of places for such people. If you think you're bad, right? I think JDF should just get those people who think them bad. Take them to places like Syria. Take them to Libya. To stay at the war front and, and, and do the things that soldiers do. But I am here to tell you this morning. That only Jesus knows what you feel and what you are feeling. And he just wants you to give him a thought. Remember, I told you before I started, I am not preaching to you to baptize you into being an Adventist. That's not what, that's not what I'm saying these things. But I am introducing Jesus to you if you do not know him. 
He's the only one that can take a bad situation and turn it into a positive situation. And he's the only one who can give hope to the living. You have something to look forward to. Imagine if you and I were standing by Jesus when he was saying to his disciples, I am going to prepare a place for you. Because what was he really doing? He was trying to energize them so that they do not feel discouraged because of the present situation. Remember, at that time, the disciples had expected that Jesus was coming, you know, to take over the throne of David, and they would be with him as the chiefs, as the captains. But the plan of salvation was completely different. So Jesus now was telling them that there is going to be a time of restoration. But what I am going to do, I'm going back to my father, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, because in my father's house, there are many mansions. And the first thing that will strike the court when Peter will have heard of mansion. I'm not sure anybody in Jamaica knows what a mansion is. You know what a mansion is? A mansion is a very big house with everything in it. And we are told, according to the scriptures, that what we use as a means of reserve on earth, right, is what we use to turn their rules in heaven. So the disciples, they were looking up to this. The time that Jesus will come back again. And what were they doing? Their expectations were now upon Jesus. Now, we are in the last days. If you think you have seen anything yet, the corona is just the beginning. There were seven plagues in Egypt. Imagine seven of this type of pandemic hits the world. Just one. All economies in the world have been crippled. If you tell me that Norman Manley, Norman Manley Airport and Samsung Airport will become empty for months, I will tell you it's a lie. But today is it not happening? Now that's that won't even surprise you. JFK, Orlando Airport, Fort Lauderdale. If you tell me that those airports, big airports with a lot of terminals, if you tell me today that there will be no flights move from there. I will say it's a lie, but it's happening before our very eyes. So, brethren, this is the time for us to turn a new leaf. Jesus is coming back again. And his coming is very, very near. And if he comes, where is he going to find you? Is he going to meet you crouching somebody? Is he going to meet you doing all the terrible things to other people? He says, these two commandments I leave with you before I invite my pastor to pray for us this morning. Say, these two commandments I leave with you. Love the Lord, love your God. Love God. And then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. The language of love is what God proposes for the living. And Paul in his writing said, let the same mind that was in Christ Jesus also be in you. And when that mind that was in Christ Jesus is in you, everything in your life will make a difference. I just want us to rise up this morning. And I want us to think about ourselves. Think about our life. Think about the things that we are doing that are not right before God. I am not here to baptize you as an Adventist, but I'm introducing Jesus to you and the language of love to you. This morning, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed? Amen. I sound a little bit silent. Were you blessed? Yeah. I know we have a funeral service, but we can still give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Because He's worthy to be praised. Silent words. I am only sorry. I did not catch all of it, but um. But that which I would have received is food for thought. He told about the twins by the name of Peter and Paul. And I'm a twin. My name is Paul, and my brother's name is Peter. We're not from Africa. We're from Jamaica, but I was just smiling to myself. Now, I want to pray for the immediate family members who are. Here with us today, so we're going to ask 
the well wishes, those who are not directly connected to the deceased. So we're gonna ask you to stand while we ask the family members to remain seated. So all the supporters who are here, you can just stand and the family members remain in your seat. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed and your hearts are lifted towards Jesus. The gracious Lord and our Heavenly Father, indeed we are grateful for your mercies and your, and your grace. Today we come, it is to say goodbye to a brother. We don't have words that are suited enough to remove the sorrow. We are not capable of touching anyone and instantly experience joy. We don't know or understand what they are really going through. All of us will have experienced the death of a loved one. But in reality, each individual pain is completely different. But we know someone who is not only able, someone who is willing, someone who understands the tears, who knows the sorrow, and who have plans to grant not just healing, but complete deliverance. So we come to you because you are the only one. We place every family member before you today. That Lord, they will look to the tears of their eyes. They will get a glimpse of the cross. They will not just listen to the words that were presented, but they will allow the words to transform their life. That they will recognize that it is appointed and the man wants to die. But after death comes the judgment. That the Lord, they will make it an urgent matter in putting their houses in order. They will take it as you were said to do us. Whatever thou doest, do it quickly. That they will move to the throne of grace before time changes into eternity. We ask that pain they are feeling, the this disappointment, the, the, the sorrow that is heavy at the mind and at the heart, that the Lord they will understand that you came into this world that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly, so that they will exercise their faith, their confidence, and their trust in you. Provide a law, keep them safe, secure them, not just in this life, because we were timely reminded by my servant that whatever is happening is just the beginning of what is to come. So may we, O Lord, take heed before it is eternally too late. We ask for your courage, we ask for your healing, and we ask for your blessings in your lives. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. And amen. And I advise to be seated. Just to give you the instructions as we bring the curtains down on the Thanksgiving service for charity. We'll be singing as our special and hymn. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. As during the singing of the hymn on the first stanza, the platform party will made their way to the door and we ask the 
Paulus, Anne-Marie, Gloria, Lorna, Melania, Christiana, Rosemary to stand in place to usher the casket out immediately after the platform party would have descended. And the Paulus will move with the casket and the family members immediately when the casket then relations and love runs. The place of internment, you will have known you have been barbecued at Bag Rock, and we will be ushered with the first to the front who will lead the way and invite us now to please stand as you'll be singing together. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in that mansion, bright and blessed. He'll be there for us, a place everybody when we are. Thank you. 
All right, um, as we, we have come to be our final farewell to our brother, and um, we trust that all of us will use this as a timely reminder that today we are and tomorrow we might not be. Therefore, I'm going to ask that wherever you are, you just reverend to bow your heads as we talk to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving Lord and our Heavenly Father, we are assembled here to bid our final farewell to our brother, your son. Oh Lord, we have no knowledge as to what the final words from his lips to your ears were like. So we can only hope that he would have settled his whole account with you. We ask that as we come, O oh Lord, you will give us the courage, the faith, and the strength so that we can live each day. Take full control of this proceeding. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. Now, the Bible said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Now, as the Lord, whether person who I'm going to be lawyer, what's your name? Yeah. Workman. 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 All right, gentlemen, let's come together. As the Lord would have seen it fit to permit his son to fall asleep, we do at this moment commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, hoping that in the sure resurrection, he will be among the numbers when the saints go Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you that we are able to lay your son to rest. Lord, we are asking that you comfort the families, guide them, protect them, take care of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may proceed. Those who, are, those who have the ability and the gift to sing, there are some songs on your funeral program. We're going to ask that you make a joyful night to the Lord. Do have anybody who sing? Where are the singers? Some sweet day I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world no more to roam. Some sweet day when life is over. Some 
I'm sweet, some sweet day. I'm going away one more time, everybody. Some sweet day. I'm going away. I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world, this old world, no more to roam, no more to roam, you know, some sweet over some sweet day some sweet day i'm going away i'm gonna walk those streets of glory sing by and by and by and by i'm gonna walk those streets of glory and by and by oh yes by and by i'm gonna walk those streets of glory i'm gonna sing redemption story i'm gonna walk those streets of glory I'm gonna leave this world. No more to go. 
world for a little season. Make sure that you make it right with Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, the family members who don't want to express their sincere gratitude to you for joining with all of us from your home. I know most of you are busy people and today might be the only day you have to carry out some activities in your home. But because of the love that you have for the family, you take the time out to come and celebrate and give the support. So they just want to express their sincere gratitude to you for coming out. And we're asking, Bridget, that your prayers, your call, and your words of encouragement should not cease after this evening. Continue to give all the support you can so that by God's grace, we can pull through together. All right? I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads where you are as we say the final prayer. Loving Lord and our Father, we thank you for joining mercies from all the way in Fort Moore to where we are in Bagua. For those who traveled, angels would have traveled with us. And we ask as we make back our journey home that you will guide us, Lord, preserve and protect our life. Mark the spot where your son is laid to rest so that, Lord, when you come, along with all those of us who would have made a covenant with you by sacrifice, if we have made it right with you, will be able to hail you as our Savior from sin to grace. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please remember to maintain your social distance. And wear your mask. And please be safe on the road. You guys behave yourself well at church. Just say amen for yourself. No? Amen. Amen. You behave well. And on the way here, you behave well. So say amen for yourself. Amen. God bless you. Travel home safely.
All right, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. All right, bless you. Bless you. Hold it, please. No, you can't hold it. You test you already. Yeah, man. The Bible. Okay. Who stand up? The dead. <laughs> the dead Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen? No, no. But I'm alive. Yeah. Yeah, man. But there's no use. I want you to do something. That's why you go home and sleep. You see when you sleep? No, you're not. When you go home and sleep, stand up. <laughs> when you're sleeping, stand up. All right, feed them with the material. <laughs> Bless you, man. Anytime. You remember the face, right? Bless you, man. I saw you on uh, fire uncle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bless you, man. All right. Bless you. All right. You had Vinny, man. Your brother, they gave you something, right? Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. The, the, I think this is one of the this week's Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Hold it, just hold it. Hold it. Hold the water. The sun's reflection too much.